are headed to the awesome toy convention in Richardson, Texas. We're gonna go hit them up and see if we can't find any cool toys because this one is specifically oriented towards vintage. I can't wait to see what we find here. <laughs> So we walk in the doors and this place is just small. Uh, it's a very small event. I think this is the first time or two this dude's put one of these things on. But you know, give it a shot, see what we can find. You know, there, it still looks like there's a lot of stuff packed in here. So after we finally get into the door, the first thing I notice, like laser vision, tunnel vision on some um, really old vintage video games. I see Jay Bolt. Yeah, I went right to the NES games. I saw him right off the bat. As soon as I walked in the door, I was paying for my ticket. I was like, right there, let's go, Wayne. I, I know, that's, that's the problem is, it's supposed to be Toy Chasers. But most of you guys know, we also do Game Chasers. We've been doing that for two years. I said it once, I'll say it again. Old habits die hard. I just can't not look at video games whenever, whenever they're around. I, I see them, I find them. I have this, this eye of the hawk vision that I just lock in and, and I, I like video games. What do you want me to do? I'm seeing a lot of cool stuff here at this convention. I'm seeing a lot of older toys too. It's not limited to just action figures from the 80s. Seeing a lot of toys from the, the 1960s and 70s and earlier, which I think is really cool. You don't run across a lot of these things in the wild a lot. Uh, so far, I'm seeing a lot of awesome stuff here. I'm seeing GoBots, Transformers, G.I. Joe, Ninja Turtles. Not seeing any Muscle Man, however. I really would like some Muscle Man. <laughs> I turn around and I see a table full of a bunch of vintage G1 Transformers. Most of them are actually in the box. And at this point I'm like, huh? So I go over there and I start looking at them. I think I asked them prices and they were astronomical also. So I was like, okay, that's cool. Kind of looked around a little bit more and, and then and then just went on my way. I'm, I always have the same problem at these conventions. It's like, what do I want to spend my money on? I come in here with a budget. What do I want? Do I want to get this or that or whatever? One thing you always do, I guess Toy Chasing 101, look in the bargain bin because you never know what you're gonna find. There's this one vendor that has these, these big plastic totes of a bunch of loose Star Wars and G.I. Joe figures. I start rummaging through the Star Wars ones. Most of these I don't believe are, are vintage, but that's okay because a lot of the newer ones are actually a lot nicer looking than some of those uh, old ones back in the day. They don't have the nostalgia factor, sure, but they are a lot more intricate and sophisticated in the sculpts. Of course, if I see anything Gremlins, I'm on it. And I see this vintage uh, stripe figure. Guy wants eight. Would you do five more on the Okay. Five dollars for this little vintage stripe figure. Man, I always see these suckers online and really happy with this because I'm a huge Gremlins fan, as we all know. As soon as I saw it, I knew I had to have it. I love getting these loose figures like this at a discount because they're figures that I always think are look cool, but I don't really want to pay full price in the in the retail stores. No sh that and they're already open, so I don't have that guilt of actually uh, busting open that blister pack. Uh-huh. I find one that I'd not really seen in the stores. Um, again, I probably wasn't really looking, though, because it really has to be a figure that grabs my attention for me to want to spend $10 on a, a tiny three and three quarters inch figure at this point. Yeah, no kidding. I see a, uh, a conceptualized figure of General Grievous. Um, and I knew they were making these because I do have the Ralph McQuarrie one for Chewbacca, still unopened in the package. Uh, but I'd never seen the Grievous one before. The guy was asking $5 for each figure, so I set that aside. Our cameraman um, sees a, a Darth Vader that he likes. With this new venture of toy chasers and stuff, there, it's gonna be a little more production needed and I hope to help, you know, get the best shot I can while it's going on. I ended up getting uh, five figures total. Um, the guy's asking $5 a piece, so I ask him what the best deal he can do is. He knocks it down to $20, so basically I get a free figure. I got the Darth Vader and I gave it to our cameraman for free. Um, I, I guess that's actually his payment for, for losing a, a Saturday filming for us.
One of the first vendors here is obviously heavy into G.I. Joe because he's got the big freaking USS flag right smack dab in the middle of his freaking booth. I'm not even gonna ask what the price is because it's gonna be like 10 times out of my price range. No point, really. He's got Night Ravens, he's got Havocs, he's got vehicles, and he's just got a ton of crap there. And that's the guy, I'm like, hey, do you have the you know Cobra Command base? And he goes, I had one earlier, I sold it, it was in box for 200 bucks. And I was like, dang, just a little bit late. That was probably probably the one toy where I'm just like, damn, I wish I still had that. But he says, I have this G.I. Joe base in this box over here for 30 bucks. Huh? Jay's eyes are like that big around looking at this G.I. Joe base. And, and he just starts putting it together. It's got the jail cell. It's got like, you know, the whole computer command center, all that stuff right there. I know he's going to be getting this thing or at least trying to make a play on it. You said it's 100%? Yeah, it's all, it's all there. I think the, the base. Oh, yeah, the base is in the instructions and the guy are there. So 30 bucks, I'm like, hang on a second, let me think about that, because I knew I wanted more stuff that this dude had. Another thing I saw that he had was the Havoc. I have no, I have to... He's got 20 on the Havoc. I want to make a play on both of these. I'm going to use the old bundle routine, of course. All of a sudden, Billy pops up out of nowhere like, like Batman and shit. And he's like, hey, I think I want this Night Raven and blah, 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 blah. That is one of the things I've been looking for for a while now. I want the Night Raven. And so I'm thinking to myself, he's at $55 for this Night Raven. So I'm thinking let's bundle this thing together with uh, the stuff that Jay's getting. So you got 30 on that, 20 on this, and how much you said for the Night Raven, 55 and 55? So of course we get in the little huddle and like, okay, let's try to talk the guy down, we'll bundle all the stuff up, whatnot. So here comes the phone part of negotiation. What's the best you can do on all three? Can you kill me? I think we're at this kind of this point where nobody wants to start off with the price. Jay's like, eh. The vendor's like, eh. eh. Well, who wants to throw out that sound like Pat just then? I've gotten to the point in negotiating where I, I just, I lowball people so much that I automatically just assume that I'm gonna insult them before I actually insult them. So I don't even want to start the negotiation. I hate doing this because people look at me like I'm an idiot. You're gonna say 50 and I'm gonna say no. Of course, and then you'll probably hit me back with what at that point? 102. <laughs> so we go back and forth with the you start, you start, you start, and the guy finally is like. You're gonna do 80? It's all good. I was actually thinking that in my head. Too, actually, 80, 80, 80 bucks. That's a nice good. All right. I'm happy with that. So yeah, I ended up paying like, I don't know. I'll call Rue up. I know Van is supposed to be at this convention. Uh, I look to the right and I actually see Van's booth. So I'm looking through his stuff and my smile is getting bigger and bigger and bigger because he has brought some amazing figures to look at. He has all these freaking Transformers I've always wanted, and he's got them at prices that you can't beat. Um, okay, at this point, I think it's just a matter of deciding what, <laughs> what I'm reading. There's a few that stand out right away. He has a Jazz, actually, in really nice shape, and he says $15. So I'm like, okay, that's, that's a pretty good deal. I'm more than willing to pay $15 for a Jazz in this condition. That's pretty cool, I guess. I see he has a Sunstreaker. How much for Sunstreaker? Sunstreaker? Sunstreaker's $15. Again, $15. I'm like, okay, let me just set these two aside over here. I love the Dinobots. I have my eye on this sludge. What did I quote you on the sludge? 
30. 30? Yes. Son of a bitch. Now one Transformer in particular kind of catches my eye. This is a Technobot. His name is Strafe. Uh, this is the only one I never had as a kid. This is the one guy that I was missing uh, from the Technobots to actually form Computron. <laughs> I set him to the side because I know if nothing else, I'm getting this guy. But I'm gonna see if I can't bundle all of these figures that I'm wanting together. Let's try to work a deal here. 15 on Jazz, 15 on Sunstreaker, right? That's a Technobot 10. So I, I, I take Melbourne and I'm like, hey dude, um, let's throw this, throw in the sludge. We go at Van together and say, how much do you want for all of these combined? All this stuff together, 70 bucks for everything. Can you do a little better, Van? Come on. Hook a brother up. And he says 65. Can you do 60? Okay. So I have my buddy. My brother's. Van's thinking about it. Yeah, do 60? Oh, thanks, guys. I'm happy with that. That's pretty dang good. That's I just spit all over the place when I said that, didn't I? I think Van's an honest guy. People are more willing to be repeat customers of you if they know you have reasonable prices and you're not out just to stiff them. Uh, so now the score is Toy Chasers 2, Pat 0. I can knock one of the little dino bots off my list. I know the transformer off the list. Let's go. At this point, my funds are running pretty low. I've almost exhausted my money and I haven't even gotten halfway through this whole place yet. I don't have $100 just to blow in toys. I'm actually an adult and, you know, have bills. This is one of the most reasonably priced um, toy shows that I've been to. Um, people were willing to work with you, haggle, nobody was really set on the price, very pleased. I'm rummaging through some guy's uh, bargain bin and I run across a toy I had as a kid. I hadn't seen this thing since I was probably seven years old, so I was super excited. It was actually a figure from the old Dungeons and Dragons line. His name was Strongheart. <laughs> When I saw this figure, I got so excited, it took me right back to being a kid again. He had $5 marked on it, but he was actually missing the cape and the feather on top of his head. The nostalgic factor, though, I want this figure, and I don't really care that he's not in the greatest shape. This is five, you take three items? Oh, sure. For a vintage 80s fan, absolutely. <laughs> I'm extremely happy with this buy. Uh, this is probably one that I'm most excited about today. Um, a little figure that not a whole lot of people know about, but it was one that I had and absolutely played to death with when I was a kid. I'm burning through my money like nobody's business. I came in here with a budget, and of course I've already shattered that, and now I'm putting things on my credit card. So I keep circling around in all these vendors, and I keep going back to Van. I, he has this Optimus Prime in the box, and I just kind of in passing, just comically, I go, so how much for the Optimus? And he's like 45, and I, I, I paused there for a second, and I asked him again, because I didn't think I heard, heard him correctly. He goes, $45, and at that point, I'm like, huh? So I go up to Melvor, he's looking at some stupid Dungeons and Dragons figurine or whatever, and I go, dude, you're not gonna believe this. It's like an Optimus Prime in the box, and he goes, only want $45 for it. And Melvor's like, huh? I mean, he didn't even have to think about it. Melvor and Billy decided to split the cost of this box Optimus Prime. Because Melbourne needs a box, Billy needs an Optimus. The Optimus I have is the same one I had as a kid, and I'm not getting rid of that for anything. That's one of the things that I've always had over Billy, is I, I've been able to taunt him, yeah, I have an Optim a vintage Optimus Prime G1, and he's always like, shut up, you know? And I think that's always bothered him. This is his chance actually to, to get an Optimus Prime again, and I don't actually know if he actually had one as a kid. The Optimus Prime is very nostalgic for me because he was one of the very first uh, Transformers that I ever got. He was one of the very few that I can still remember actually opening up on Christmas. The Optimus in the box is most likely in a lot better condition, but mine, there's that connection there. It's the one I grew up with playing. Back looks nice. Yeah, four Optimus points. This is still this is still attached, which is really cool. I'm all right. Maybe I'm a little bit jealous about the forty-five dollar prime. That's a hell of a deal. So tell me what you want. Uh, yeah. um, I like the Optimus that was in the box. And you said you'd include Spitz. I'll give I'll give you the fist. Okay. <laughs> and I like that trailer better. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's... Transformers isn't my thing, but come on, Prime's Prime. If you don't like Prime, you're an American. Get the f out of the country.
It's like not liking spaghetti and meatballs. <laughs> So get out of the country if you don't like a Japanese-made toy because it's like you don't like an Italian-made dish. <laughs> Pretty much. Well, I've been on a desert. <laughs> been on a. I don't know. I'll throw in the roller. That's awesome, dude. This guy's hooking us up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Essentially, I'm getting this for twenty bucks. Whatever. All right, so, uh, F Billy, F Melbourne. I want a box prime too. If you told me before we went to this convention that I was going to get a, uh, an Optimus Prime for $20 in this great a condition, I would have laughed because I would have thought it was ludicrous. But I'm getting hooked up, man. I'm getting hooked up big time here, and I'm ecstatic about it. Buttholes. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting late in the day, and as I'm walking out, I spot on the one vendor's um, table a hiss tank pick it up and look at it. The vendor just immediately looks, look, looks at me and says, $4. Well, I'm like, $4? Wow. And I look at it and I, and I make sure it's not a reissue. Re I look at it, it says 1984. At this point, it's pretty much sold. Time is slipping. I'm kind of mad. It's in really good shape. I mean, the gun's loose, but for $4? Why would Billy have gotten this for $4? What, what was going through the vendor's mind to just be like, mom, damn, yeah, Fuck it, take it, four bucks, here, you can have it. He also has a shark tooth. I point over to that, well, if this is four, how much is that? He says five. And not only is it just the vehicle, it actually comes with deep six. Five freaking dollars for this. Yeah, I'm a little mad about that one. I'm mad, more mad about this than I am stupid Optimus Prime. I had this one as a kid too. Um, I used to play with it in the bathtub because it was a water vehicle. And that's what you do. <laughs> Look what I got. <laughs> but I also ask him, Hey, look, uh, I got like $10 on me. Do you got anything else for a dollar? And he's basically he goes, you know, look around. And just kind of in passing, I look around and see a Destro. Billy don't even like G.I. Joe. I pick it up and go, ha ha, Destro for a dollar? Ha ha ha, ha ha. I'll, 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 I'll stupid guy. I really looked that stupid because I was, I thought I was being funny guy. I was like, ha ha, Destro for a dollar? Hey, what about this? Ha ha. He's like, yeah. And I'm like, huh? I'm like, what the hell? And I, my, my immediate reaction at that point was, what, well, is this a reissue? So I look, well, this, is, this has got to be a reissue if you're selling it to me for a dollar. And he was like, no, I'm just trying to get rid of all this stuff. Okay, put it right in my pocket and gave him the $10 bill. Are you going to go over there? I have no more cash on it. Yeah, I'm, I'm mad about this one. I, I don't like that too much. You know, the Flintstones, I was very upset about Flintstones, but F the Flintstones, I didn't have that as a kid. If I had any more cash on me, I would have walked out with more figures, but I was absolutely 100% tapped out at that point no more money uh, because he actually had a shipwreck and shipwreck is my favorite joe i recently purchased him probably about a year ago at a sci-fi convention i lost him not only did i lose my toys as a kid i'm losing him as an adult <laughs> what i have looked all over my game room I found every single freaking toy i had shipwreck right at my computer looking over me as i edit and for the life of me, I cannot find him. He is, he is gone. He is gone. He went on shore leave. I went in there pulling $60 out of the ATM saying, okay, this is, this is going to be my limit. $60, I'll get whatever I can and that's it, you know. And that opened up a whole can of worms because that $60 was not all I spent. Uh, it, it was closer to $100 and, and I'm going to be feeling it. I'm going to be eating a lot of ramen noodles the next, the next few weeks. <laughs> that's not funny, dude. It is because that's what I eat for lunch. Overall, this toy convention was was pretty awesome, actually. Uh, there was some pretty decent prices here. There was a lot of variety as far as the toys go. Everybody walked away with something. Everyone was pretty happy with the money they spent for the products that they got. I got to mark off quite a few things off my checklist of, of toys that I'm trying to repurchase. Starting this series is, is giving me the opportunity to go back and try to to find some of these old guys that I never had as a kid. And I was actually able to, to strike a few off my list. I came out here and I made out like a bandit. All these things for my childhood have been repurchased and, and, and I'm so freaking happy about it. I hope it grows uh, just bigger and bigger in the future and you know, maybe next year it'll be twice as big. No, I'm, I'm happy because uh, a goal in all this was for me to get all the Dinobots, and so... Everyone loves Grimlock. I just thought he was playing a toy. Me, Grimlock? He reminded me of Jay, actually. Kind of just a stupid 
Rude. Yeah. BJ Hungry. <laughs> I don't know what I can say about that. So. BJ no pay full price. <laughs> BJ me pay me pay dollar for video game. Full price. Like I said, um, I really can't complain too much. I really wanted that Sky Striker. And now I regret not getting it. Thinking about it right now, I wish I would have gotten it. So I should have asked Regina for more money. Well, I'm a floating head, huh?